This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to have something really really cool and fairly easy to be honest and it's going to look so so elegant and so nice and it's so versatile too. You can make basically a dress out of it really easily as well if you so desire or you can make a top or whatever else comes to mind. This technique is something that I personally have not tried out before so in this video you're actually going to see me figure out everything on my own for the first time but it turned out so so nice and I'm really excited to share this one with you guys. So without further ado let's just jump right into the video. So for today's project we're actually going to start with our bodice or dress blocks that we created in a previous video which I will be linking up here in the corner in the eye for everybody who is interested in making a bodice block specifically to their size I can recommend you that video because today's top will actually be a very nice and easy project based on the bodice blocks that we did in a previous video. There is also a tutorial on how to make the uh, sleeve pattern which I will be linking for you guys here in the eye now if you're interested in that but for today's project we're actually not going to be using the sleeve pattern we're just going to need our front and back bodice block. We're going to make a top that is going to go right to the waistline and we're going to figure out uh, after the first fitting if that is actually the length that we want to have. So I'm just going to trace out both the front and back pieces. And we're actually going to focus on my front piece first because we have darts in here that we don't necessarily want but we're gonna have a cowl neck and a cowl neck is specified through draping here in the front. You probably know the satin tops and dresses, slip dresses mostly have it with the draped front. That is a cowl neck. I'm gonna put a picture right here so you know what I'm talking about if you haven't already seen the thumbnail obviously and uh, that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna put all of this into the front and that is fairly easy because we're gonna have our, our uh, bust line is right here so we're gonna have let's go six centimeters in our arm hole up and then draw a line just across parallel to the bust line six centimeters higher I have no idea if that works haven't tried it out we're gonna make a mock-up with this and then we're gonna see if this actually fits so this is our bust point that is fairly low let's say so it doesn't matter too much if we just put it up let's say three centimeters and just deal with it up here but it's gonna make a big difference for our cowl neck because now we have our point right here and we're gonna draw a line straight to the center front and now we're going to cut into our piece right here just towards the point we're gonna do the same thing down here and the same thing for the bust dart and what that's gonna do once we turn our darts closed it's gonna open up a dart right here and that's exactly what we want and what we're gonna do here as well since our neckline right here is now curved we're just gonna draw an approximate line to the center front and then take some paper and put it where the dart opened in the center front so that we have something to draw on And we're going to elongate the center front line all the way up to the point that we just drew. I think I'm just gonna do a different armhole. So I'm gonna go down two centimeters right here and inward one centimeter. And then I'm just gonna ease the curve into the two points that I just specified. And up here is where our string is gonna be attached and now what we want to do 
is actually, since this is gonna be draped and nicely in, into the center front, we wanna have some sort of facing or something similar to that. And we're not gonna sew a facing on because it's gonna prohibit the draping. We're just gonna fold from the corner where our sleeve is gonna get attached to the center front that we just angled nicely. And we're just gonna draw a, we're simply gonna draw a line anywhere, but lower than the folded line and cut into our armhole. We're just gonna cut out the shape of our armhole. That's gonna mirror our armhole shape for the draping and that actually gives us a facing and if if you can if you can call it like that um, more fabric of course so that it drapes nicely onto this area so it's gonna make the nice cowl neck fall and we're just gonna elongate this line because this is gonna be our fold line this whole thing is gonna be on the bias so it drapes even nicer. And now we can go ahead and actually And now the back piece is pretty easy. We're going to orientate ourselves at the side seam, just going to make this small corner disappear. So we're going to put our piece right there so we know how deep our armhole lowering is. And then we can just draw a nice curve into our armhole. And then I'm just gonna go five centimeter higher than the bust line and take out this start more or less out of the waist. And we can cut this piece out as well. There will be no facing on the back piece because it's not gonna be draping like the front piece. This is gonna be more or less straight line across the back. So there is no need for a facing or any anything like that. So this is totally fine. And these are the two pieces that we're going to try out in a mock-up fabric. So this is the situation right now. I just quickly put it on so I can see what I still want to change. I think the draping here in the front actually looks quite nice, but it feels a bit unstable, if you know what I mean. And that I think is due to the fact that the back is very loose and it shouldn't be loose like that. I'm gonna put it on the bust in just a second so I can put pins in and see what I want to do, but I think it's gonna end up having a zipper somewhere because this is, I mean, it is cut on the bias, but still it's not gonna stretch as much as it would need for me to just be able to put it over my shoulders, I think. So I will be trying to just sew it tighter in the back but I guess I will have to end up putting a zipper in the back or in, in the side seam or wherever, but I think I'm gonna make it a thing and just like cover it up really nicely. But apart from that, this actually turned out fairly good, to be honest. The draping looks really nice and the strings have a really nice position in the front and the back, I think. And the only thing that I have to change is the width here in the back and that's all. I also like the length. So let's do that. Let's put it on the, on the dress form and change it. next day and I actually went ahead and made another mock-up 
off the top with all the changes included. I also put a zipper in the side seam right here so you can easily put the, the top on and it looks really nice. The draping here in the front looks really good and the back also is okay. I put the straps, the attachment of the straps a bit more to the outside because I thought it was a bit too much inward and I changed that already. I also, all the changes that I um, showed you just now in the videos are already in here. So this is the final piece minus the sleeves being, the straps being a bit more to the outside. And this is how it's going to end up looking. I think I'm going to elongate the top a tiny bit because now it seems like it's a bit short, just maybe to here. So you can definitely put it in your pants and your high waisted pants if you so want to. And apart from that, I think this looks really, really nice. There are a few manufacturing details that I still want to change. For example, I already showed you that in the video that the facing is not going to end here, but actually goes all the way to somewhere down here. So it's going to be tucked away neat and tidy and I won't need a top stitch all the way here into the front which I don't want because it doesn't look that nice and that's all so let's go ahead and make this top and I'm going to show you step by step how I am doing it but before we get into that let's talk a bit about our sponsor Skillshare Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey while unpacking the last boxes in my apartment, I came across one of my older art folders with artworks of an exhibition I did a couple of years ago. Art has always been a great passion of mine, which slowly drifted into the background over the years. Having had practice for a very long time, I really had no idea on how to start drawing again. I really, really wanted to though. Thankfully, Skillshare has numerous classes on everything around art and illustration, design, photography, video and freelancing and so much more to explore. The one class that helped me specifically getting into drawing again was Mastering Illustration, Sketching, Inking and Color Essentials by Josiah Brooks, an artist, YouTuber and entrepreneur. He explains step by step how to get from a rough pencil sketch to a beautiful colored artwork. I recommend this class very much if you're into markers, comics and mangas like I am. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions and get lost in creativity. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're launching new premium classes all the time. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity leads you. So check out the link down in the description below and in the pinned comment, because the first 1000 to click the link down below will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. Thank you so much for Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so for my final piece, I chose this beautiful back crepe satin in this amazing lime green. And I fold it at a 40 degree angle so that I can cut out my pattern pieces on the bias and on the fold. That's very important so that the cowl neck in the front falls really nicely. Also make sure to cut into the notch where the fold in the front is. I then proceed to cut out my back piece same thing also on the bias. I fold my fabric a bit weirdly because I want to save as much fabric as possible and it's already cut into because I already made a few mock-ups also out of this fabric. I then proceed to cut a few three centimeter wide strings out of my fabric with a normal grain, not on the bias this time because these are going to be my straps that I will be attaching in the front and the back. These pattern pieces are already included, of course, in my pattern that you can get on my Etsy, so you don't have to worry about measuring anything. I use a cotton string that I attach on one end to turn the whole string over because it's a very, very narrow one. It's like five millimeters in the end. There are tools, but I don't have any of the tools. I just use this method and it works out fine. So you can just pull on the string and it will come eventually and turn inside out. If you use my method, make sure to cut off the string in the end and then also peel out the insides that are still left, which will be some seam allowance and the very last bit of the string that you can't quite cut off. I then proceed to iron my strings so that oh, the seam is only visible on one side and you can totally see that I did not cut out my string on the straight grain. It's like kind of twisting, which means that it's not the perfect straight 
grain, but that doesn't matter. You can totally iron it out and it works out fine. By the way, I cut my strings down to around 32 centimeters, seam allowance included. Proceeding on with my front pattern piece, I fold it where the fold line is. There should be notches that you should have cut into. And this is the place where my strings get attached. And I place them so that the seam is visible on the upper side because that will be the side that faces the inside. So like the facing side, I guess. And I just pin them down horizontally. So where the fold is just right in there and pin down the armhole that is mirrored on the facing side. And that's what I sew right sides together on both sides. Before turning anything around, I make sure to cut down the seam allowance so that it folds nicer. If you leave it like that, it's not gonna lay nice and you're gonna have a hard time putting everything into place. I then just pull on the string and it should just come out perfectly and then I can proceed to iron my seam. And I also do that so that the seam shows only on the facing side. So I wiggle it kinda uh, one millimeter to the inside so that it is not visible from the outside. You can see it right there. I then understitch the seam allowance to the facing just as far as I can go. It's about two centimeters before the string is attached. That's just how my machine can handle it. Maybe you can do it all the way, maybe not. It doesn't really matter. Just understitch it and you're good. Being almost done with the front piece, I proceed to overlock the long raw side of my facing. And no, you don't need a specific overlock machine. You can also just use the zigzag stitch on your normal machine if you have one. Or if both of those methods are not for you, there are plenty of sources on the internet on how to finish your edges. Continuing on with my back piece, and I actually take the right side seams of both my front and back piece and pin it together. I make sure that the top has just one centimeter seam allowance sticking out above the just top stitched edge. And then I sew right sides together, making sure to not sew into the seam allowance of the back piece that I just talked about. I also finish that raw edge with my overlock machine. Once that is done, I iron the seam allowance towards the back piece. Moving on to the zipper. So there will be an inseam zipper in the left side seam so that you can put the top on. That is due to the waistline actually being quite tight so that it fits nicely, but that calls for a zipper in any seam. Make sure to place the zipper in the correct way. It should open towards the hem and place it around two centimeters lower than the upper corner of your top. So you won't have any problems with that plastic stopper on the end of the zipper band. Pin it along the seam and sew it in place using your zipper foot. It should end up looking something like this. I am using a 20 centimeter zipper. You can use anything between 20 to 22 centimeters as the seam is 22 centimeters long. I recommend a 20 centimeter zipper though. I then uh, put some pins in so that I can mirror all of the points of one seam to the other, for example, the upper edge or also here the lower edge. This just makes it so much easier to put the other zipper band in parallel to the one that you just sewed and to make it really neat and tidy. Once the zipper is in, I also close the two centimeter gap on the upper side so that I can proceed putting the facing nicely into place. And I basically just turn the facing right sides onto the seam allowance of the zipper and pin it in place. I turn it around just to see if the upper corner is nice and tidy and then proceed to just stitch it on. I use my one-sided foot for this as there are the teeth of the zipper and it kind of makes it hard to sew it with the normal foot. I do the same thing, of course, on the other side as well. As there is no zipper, it's a bit easier. And voila, this is a really, really nice and tidy finish of the facing and it looks really good. Now we can continue on and put the straps on the back piece into place. There are the corners obviously where the straps will be attached. I just put them parallel to the armhole cut out just so that the line will continue on into the straps and it looks really, really nice. It's gonna end up being rounded anyways, but nevertheless, it also is a good orientation for them to be parallel. Just make sure that the strings are not twisted in any way before you continue on. Take the bias tape 
shape that you cut out before there is also a pattern piece in my pattern that is linked below if you're interested just make sure that it measures all the way over your back piece and fold it in half left sides together so the right side is visible on the outside and then pin it onto the upper corner with the fold facing down so you put raw edges together basically of the top end of the bias tape raw and right sides together and pin it all the way across your back piece from one side seam to the other when pinning down the corners where the straps are attached just around the bias tape in a nice and even way this is going to make the actual edge also rounded also at the end fold the raw edges of the corners to the inside and then pin it down to have a nice and neat finish on either side then you can proceed to sew everything on. Once done with that, I cut away the seam allowance pretty radically actually so like down to two millimeters three millimeters something like that because the next step is folding the bias tape to the inside and creating a nice and neat finish without any raw edges visible i start on the side seam where there is a given upper edge and just try to orientate myself on the um, upper edge so that it looks really neat and tidy if you have a label that is the time to put it in the center back like i did right there and then i just top stitch the bias tape down and it makes this amazing nice and neat edge Give it a good press and then continue on with your preferred method of hemming the top. I just turned five millimeters over twice and then top stitch just to make it look similar as the upper corner. And I think it's also the neatest way to do this in my opinion because it is actually a pretty elegant method. But of course you are free to do whatever you want. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope I was able to teach you how to make a cowl neck top. This one specifically is so, so cute. I'm gonna show you the videos that I took here in my apartment by myself in just a second. Sadly, I didn't have time to like do this whole shoot that I normally do for my videos, but that's fine. It was totally cool to just do it by myself. And I think the pictures and videos turned out really, really cute. And you can see fairly well how the top looks like. But before we get into that, I just quickly wanted to ask you guys to hit the subscribe button down below and to ring the bell to get notified every time I post. I post on Sundays, so you can keep an eye out for that or every other day as well. I would highly recommend to go and watch all the other videos that I have on my channel, which are quite a few already. But if you're into sewing and learning how to sew and how to make patterns, I highly recommend to just check out my other videos because I have plenty on those topics. Also, if you haven't already, check out my links down in the description below to follow me on my socials, Instagram, TikTok, whatever you name it. It's all the same handle as here on YouTube. So you can go ahead and follow me there as I am sharing lots of behind the scenes footage of me, my cat, my videos and stuff like that there, especially in my Insta stories and yeah that's it thank you so much for watching and i'm gonna see you next sunday bye guys